Yes, good morning, good afternoon, because I know we have people joining uh, from all different parts uh, of, of the world uh, to this webinar, which is exciting because I've looked at those who registered. Um, and so welcome to the first uh, webinar, I guess, of the, say this current ski season. We did some webinars last year, for some of you may remember, and this one entitled kind of Return to the Mountains, um, uh, which is exciting to be having that as a topic um, uh, and a positive topic. Um, so just to give you a little bit of uh, admin as to how uh, today's webinar is going to run, uh, the first part will be a panel discussion um, uh, for about 20 or so minutes, um, and I'll introduce the panel in, the, in a minute, and then this will be followed by uh, a Q&A, so giving the opportunity of anyone who is attending uh, to write in their questions. Um, these questions will be fielded by Felix Hemsley, who's our marketing director, you can see his icon, but not himself. Um, and he will be trying to answer some of those questions as we go along, or I will put them to the panel, either during the panel discussion or at the end. And if we don't answer your question, it's not because we're ignoring you, I promise. Um, it's just because we haven't got time and we will definitely, because we have your details, get back to you and you will have the questions answered. Uh, and this is also being recorded. So if you have to leave or miss any part of it, uh, we will share the recording as well. Um, so let's uh, introduce our panel, um, uh, which is an absolute pleasure. Uh, three great people, great authorities from the Alpine nations uh, from Austria. Uh, we have Wilma Himmelfreund-Poitner, who is head of marketing at St. Anton Tourism. St. Anton for us uh, is consistently one of our most requested ski resorts in Austria. And now that it is so well linked up with its neighbors of Zürslek and Vath, it is, I think, the largest ski area, uh, linked ski area in Austria. Uh, so, um, yes, representing St. Anton, but talking about a bigger area and also Austria as a whole. Uh, jumping over to France, uh, we have Florine, uh, Florine Verjou, who's from the Cochevel uh, Tourist Office. Um, and so, uh, obviously, Courcheval, part of the epic Les Trois Vallées ski area, uh, which, as we know, will be welcoming guests from all around the world uh, uh, imminently. Uh, so great to have uh, Florine. And uh, last, but by no means least, uh, we welcome back uh, Alex Herman, uh, uh, who's a director of Switzerland Tourism for UK and Ireland. Um, and, you know, all eyes were on Switzerland uh, last winter as the people who successfully did stay open for the ski season and championing and that and therefore useful i think benchmark for all countries to see the success of what did happen there uh you know, going forward for this winter and also it's been a good summer so the questions i'm going to ask are, are very much based around the daily conversations uh that we are have with our clients in in the office um, and these are questions that really are coming to us all the time. So I want to make it as, as current as possible. Um, there, you know, we've been very busy. Um, the September and October have been hugely busy with bookings, which is great. And actually, I have to keep reminding myself, this is how it should be. This is the time of year that those of us in the ski industry are busy. And this is actually just normal. It just is well exciting to be so busy again. And there's a lovely buzz around. And I continually admire the tenacity of skiers as, as holiday makers uh, and regularly hear phrases such as I will be skiing this winter come what may uh, and that sort of attitude is obviously what we all like to hear but it is wonderful to have that tenacity um, so let's hope that remains okay let's get straight into some questions then um, so with skiing you know with glaciers now opening or open in Austria Italy France and Switzerland uh, and I know some US uh, ski resorts are now open. The season has started, and I know training is going. We've got the Winter Olympics uh, obviously coming up in Beijing. So skiers are on the slopes. Um, but uh, Wilma, let's we'll start with you first. Um, we know that ski lifts did actually open in Austria last year, but tourist accommodation was closed. Where is it going to be for this winter? You know, are lifts back open or going to be open? And, you know, and also accommodation too. Well, thanks for having me on the panel. I really like to say hello to everybody I don't even see. 
um, I can tell you it's a really good feeling right now. Our glacier areas have already started to operate and we were very lucky the last couple of weeks while they were open that the weather was good, the snow was good and many of my friends already were as well on the slopes. And this weekend we are looking forward to a big event, which is for us always like the official start into the winter season in Austria. That's going to be the World Cup races this weekend in Sölden in the Tyrol. So that's when we really can feel that people start, then uh, the bookings are even being uh, more intensive. And I'm going to go there as well this weekend. And we in San Anton, we will start the season on 3rd of December. Exciting. So things really are opening up and all accommodation is now open or allowed to be open as normal. So the hotels and the apartments and the tourist, you know. Yes. And I can tell you, it's a very good, it's a very good feedback. We get not only from tour operators, but from all our hosts, they say, wow, it, the bookings are amazingly good. And as you mentioned as well, you know, people want to get back on the slopes. Some people even say, hey, this year I couldn't ski last uh, year. This year I want to ski twice or stay longer. So, I mean, right now it's a very positive feeling. Uh, lots of bookings for, let's say, okay. not only for the big seasons, but as well that uh, in the off-season time. So at the moment, everything seems to be open, uh, will be open and hopefully stays great. open. Great to hear. So, Florine, um, we heard um, recently the uh, one of the French ministers for tourism, Monsieur Lemoyne, or Lemoyne, not sure how to say his name, uh, guaranteeing that ski lifts will open this winter. It was lovely to hear that, of course. But what else can you tell us? What backs this up from not just in Courchevel, but in, 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 this, in France? Well, uh, so Jean-Baptiste Le Moine. <laughs> uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone before I start. So yes, Jean-Baptiste Le Moine announced that a few days ago, about 10 days ago. Uh, I just read actually this morning that he will uh, have a more precise statement next week, but uh, the guideline is really that we will be skiing in France uh, next season, normally with no health pass, uh, but everything will be well precised uh, by next week. So we will, of course, communicate on that. And regarding Courchevel, we will open on the 4th of December. Les Trois Valley Connection will open on the 4th of December as well. Val Torrance will be already open from the 20th of November. And basically, all the French ski resorts are preparing to be open between the 4th and the 18th of December. So we're really looking forward to it. Very exciting to hear and good news. Um, Alex, uh, Switzerland um, it obviously remained open, but is there uh, anything new you can tell us or is it business as usual in Switzerland? We, we were, of course, very happy to be the, the one um, country in the Alps where, where skiing was, was possible. Of course, it was mostly the Swiss that skied. But what's important is that the hospitality industry was open. And um, so we, we were able to, to prove that it's uh, possible to have a great time on the slopes and stay completely safe because really um, the entire season there was no uh, incident whatsoever. So um, building on that, this year, yesterday, the Federal Council uh, in Switzerland decided that there will be no uh, general request for a COVID certificate uh, to enter a ski resort or to, uh, to buy a ski pass or anything. So that sets Switzerland apart from, from some other Alpine countries. So there's no requirement for a, for a COVID certificate to enjoy skiing in Switzerland. Of course, we, we still recommend uh, people to, to get uh, their COVID certificate for the hospitality industry, for indoor hospitality, for hotels, where um, uh, most places require the COVID certificate. Um, I mean, the restaurants definitely require them, and most hotels nowadays also require the COVID certificate. But there's no request to, um, uh, no requirement to enter the ski resort, which will also make it easier to just process the whole um, logistics of, uh, of, the, of the ski winter. And of let's, course, there's let's, no indication whatsoever that skiing will be limited in, in one way or another this, uh, this season in Switzerland. Great to hear. Um, and let's sort of move on to that topic. I think, you know, we can't, the, the COVID related questions are still very, very much crucial. Um, and yeah, I think it's fair to say, give or take, apart from exceptional circumstances, certain countries or even potentially certain vaccines, but basically Alpine countries are all welcoming tourists back. Um, and, you know, if they have got the uh, double vaccination or recent tests, uh, negative tests, um, that then people can travel and, uh, and get there, which is great. And that basically opens up the skiing for the majority of people. 
which is fantastic. But let me look at the few of the COVID questions coming, which you just alluded to just now. You know, okay, so it's you're saying you don't need to have a, a health pass or pass sanitaire or whatever it might be. There's different phrases used um, when you're going to go and buy a ski pass. Do you know if that's the case uh, in Austria? Do you, is it going to be some requirement to prove uh, you know, a double vaccination or a recent negative test to get a ski pass? Well, in in Austria, it's actually, it's the free G, which is required not only for the ski lifts, but as well for like staying in hotels or entering restaurants. And let's say everybody who is vaccinated has no problems at all to get in anywhere ever. But with the free G is, is either you're, I mean, it's, you know it as well. Uh, it's either you're vaccinated, you're recovered or you're tested. So those free Gs uh, at the moment, you know, we never know how things change, but they are required really, let's say literally nearly for everything as well for buying lift passes. Yes, that's correct. So if you are vaccinated, you can buy a season's lift pass. If you are not vaccinated, you only can buy the lift pass for the period of time uh, your test shows that it's uh, valid for. So this is uh, one of the things which we really wanna, we wanna ensure uh, that everybody is safe. But from our experience we had in the summertime, because you, know, you needed it as well for hotels that I would say that like 95% of the guests traveling and coming to, to Austria, to St. Anton, they were vaccinated. So for them, it was easy. So, yeah, so the three G, as you call it, which I think, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, I'm going to uh, Amsterdam next week. I mean, carrying some of those documents is like, it's like carrying your passport. It's standard, exactly. standard issue. Um, but it's um, interesting you say you would need that to buy a ski pass, um, which is obviously new, something people haven't had to do before. But then once they get on the mountain, um, will they need it to go into a mountain restaurant in the assumption that if they've got the ski pass, they would have already had to prove uh, that they have the 3G or will they still need to be checking it in the mountain restaurants, for example? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I have to ask that specifically, but I could imagine because otherwise you wouldn't be on the lift. Yeah. If you if you uh, wouldn't have been uh, checked, but just to make sure how they do it in the mountain restaurants, I would not know. But I mean, as you say, you, you should, most of the people have it on their mobile phone anyway. And it's just now like when you ever go in and just show an entrance ticket, it's just the entrance ticket then. But uh, it's a good question, which I'm not 100% sure if they will check again. But that's OK. You have uh, it. Marine, um, if we move over to, to, to France, is that a similar position you think in... Uh, no, not exactly. Uh, in France, you need the health pass in all types of restaurants. And they consider that, for example, for the mountain restaurant, you can access it by snowshoeing or snow touring, so not necessarily using the lifts. So all types of restaurants, mountain restaurants, in resort restaurants, you need to show your health pass. And the conditions to get the health pass are similar to the one in Austria. So either double doses of vaccines, recovery, or um, PCR test. Exactly. Um, uh, uh, and I think that's, you know, I think in general, that's quite sort of across the board. So I guess if people have that, in, you know, they have that, they need it to travel anyway to a point and certain you're going to have that information with you. So I don't think it's going to be, well, I, it does become normal. And if that's the case, uh, you know, that's, I don't see a problem. But yes, yeah, so at the moment, uh, that's the same, you know, if you're off the mountain in the town, if you're going into a restaurant in the evening, it's a similar thing, uh, uh, of what I can tell. Just on testing um, in resort, this is a question that comes up quite a lot um, because they might need to do, you know, your test might be valid for let's say 72 hours and you might need, you're there for a week and you might need to do a test in resort to have a more recent uh, negative test. Uh, or the other question is people might need to test uh, when they come back to the country of origin and do a test before they return. Can you tell us about um, testing facilities um, uh, in resort, Florine? Do you know whether you'll be able to get tested in the hotel or will there be something that the yes. tourist office are uh, offering? In Courchevel, in most French resorts, you will find either a testing center or a medical center doing the tests. Uh, and I did some research before the webinar. Uh, most hotels are looking for um, 
uh, solutions for the clients. So for example, having nurses coming to the hotel to the PCR test or driving the clients to the testing center. So this should be seen individually with each hotel, but in most, almost all resorts in France, you will find facilities to have your tests. Uh, the only thing is that for foreign people, so not French people, it costs 44 euros for a PCR test per person and 25 euros for an antigenic test in a pharmacy. Okay, that's really helpful. So the facilities are gonna be there. They may be available in the hotel or they'll be just a public place, you know, you can do it. Uh, Alex, is that something, you know, the testing facilities, even if it might not be as a, such a requirement to get in and out of hotel, restaurants and stuff, will it, but some will still need to be tested before they fly back home, for example. Will Switzerland have those facilities? Uh, absolutely. It's very similar to, uh, to what we just heard from uh, Florine. It's, uh, we, we want to uh, reduce the time uh, that people spend on their holiday worrying about tests. So the tests are readily available everywhere. Without uh, symptoms, uh, once again, it's the same. Um, without symptoms, you have to uh, you have to pay for a test as a uh, foreign as an international guest. But um, uh, it's really from from a, a local pharmacy where you can get the test to the full service where a nurse comes to your hotel room and, and does everything uh, uh, surplus. That's that's all available. We I mean, once again, it's, uh, the fact that you don't need the COVID um, certificate or any health pass to access the ski resort doesn't mean that. Um, we would recommend you do that, of course, uh, for, um, uh, once again, for restaurants to sit inside, uh, you will need that. Um, many hotels, even though technically to, you can stay at a hotel uh, without the health pass, but of course then to, to go to the breakfast buffet or something like that, uh, you, you need it. So many hotels have switched to checking the, uh, the health pass or the COVID certificate upon check-in. So. Um, it's still, of course, the best thing to do to get uh, vaccinated, get that certificate, and uh, it makes you... Your that's good. I, mean, I think we can board. summarize it there. generally across the board that some requirements are going to meet for that health pass, yeah. which is... No, that's helpful. Thank you so much. Just moving on to one other kind of COVID-related thing. Uh, and I saw from a, in a, an announcement from Ishkel, um yesterday, which was, you know, a big investment uh, into, uh, I suppose, uh, sanitizing or hygiene measures. Uh, and they put in uh, all of their buses and their cable cars are going to be using the cold fogging equipment, which eliminate X amount of the viruses. Have you heard that is the case in other, in St. Anton or in other uh, Austrian resorts? Yes. Well, I have to say that like uh, summer 2020, we all nearly became virologists because we will work together with specialists on all uh, matters. And, you know, we really worked out safety uh, systems, starting from this key bus uh, in the ski shops. Or, uh, I mean, of course, with the cable cars, with the hotels. So it's really, I think we are really, really well prepared uh, the way of like how things are signalized uh, everywhere. And as well, wherever you go, you see those hygienic, uh, hygienic spenders with all those things. So uh, you really see it all over. And like you should keep the distance and all those kind of things. Uh, I think we are all wherever I go, it's the same. I, I can feel that and I see that that they, everybody takes good care of, uh, you know, of making everything safe. Yeah, which is great. And I think that's incredible. And I think I've seen a lot of that across the yes. Alpine nations and beyond. Um, just trying to move away from COVID because we, I think, you know, we can get bogged <laughs> down in it. Um, uh, but just... Um, Let's look, move on to booking trends. I think, you know, really helpful, but yeah, let's move on to what other things are going on. You know, booking trends, we have seen strong demand for next year. People want to go skiing, it's great. Um, uh, and combine this with, obviously, some people had to move their holiday from last winter to next winter, and other factors like, and quite rightly, chalet owners and apartment owners who haven't used their property going for longer. Um, uh, there's a big demand in general. Um, but Florine, you know, Courcheval, what are you hearing from the uh, from your hotels and um, accommodation providers uh, on bookings recently? Well, I think they all say the same. They are almost all fully booked already for Christmas, New Year's, and some parts of February, uh, way ahead of what we used to be even in uh, 1920. Uh, speaking about France in general, we are on the same level that as we were uh, to date in uh, 1920. But in Courchevel, we are hitting some uh, numbers, historical numbers, I would say. That's incredible. 
That's very exciting and, and wonderful and, uh, you know, promising to have those advanced bookings in. Um, Alex, you know, from, the, from, the, from your knowledge of the Swiss resorts, what's the feedback you're getting in, across the, for bookings? We, of course, talk to many resorts on a daily basis and it, it looks uh, very promising. Um, for, for many mountain resorts, actually, the summer was um, pretty good either uh, um, already. Uh, uh, so um, there were some hotels that had absolute record summers uh, last summer, with, uh, this summer with, um, with Swiss and some um, guests from uh, neighboring countries mostly. But no, it, it looks great. It's not too late yet. So uh, don't worry, you can still find space. Um, but uh, we would recommend you, um, uh, you, know, you call soon and try to... Uh, uh, get your, your booking in. Uh, I'm quite right. It's exactly what you should be saying, Alex. I can't, I can't endorse that more. Um, but Vilma, from your side, I was just thinking, I mean, I'm sure it's the same picture there, but and Easter's quite late next year, which I think is good. And it potentially feels like we've got a bit more opportunity to extend the season. Is Do you think it'll be busier right up until the end, more so than other years? Are you encouraging people to go skiing quite late? Well... As we are a very high resort, so it's really good for us when, when Easter is later because it makes the season longer and we know that the snow conditions usually in April are just amazing. So we are looking forward to that. And yes, we are pushing the what we call uh, sun skiing or fern skiing. So yes, it will be a positive I think a positive end towards the season then as well, because, and of course, I think things will calm down uh, with the with the COVID around the world. So I'm sure that uh, April will be good everywhere in the Alps. Um, and do you know that some resorts have already put their end date back a bit? Um, uh, not that, not from my knowledge, but you know, because that always depends a lot uh, of the uh, location, how high they are, because you know, in lower areas, it doesn't make much sense if then the, the snow has melted, but for the higher areas, uh, it, it's really good when, uh, when we have long seasons till towards the end of April, we have it till the 26th of April. Yeah, that's great. And that's late. You know, it's a, it's a yes. long season. People I think, yes. often don't realize they can go right to the end and go more than once. Enjoy a week early on and go late. Um, do you know anything, Farina, any encouragement to, you know, push people into those off-peak dates? Those, you know, that first week in February, I always think it's one of the best weeks to go. It's before the busy February holidays. Do you have any incentives that you, you can think of that encourage that? In I would say in a more general uh, point of view, most accommodation providers uh, did offers like uh, buy six, get seven nights or um, early bookings offer with 15 or 20 percent discounts. For us in Crochevel, uh, we have such an inter international clientele that we don't need to push a lot these periods. They, they, they fill with people from Brazil, from Turkey, from the Middle East. So yeah, which is, yeah, they, all, they have different holidays and so that you can expect. And actually, Alex, I mean, have you noticed any other nationalities in particular uh, who are sort of taking up skiing and there's been more bookings this year or is it a bit early to say? I mean, for, for this season, um, not really. Uh, until two years ago, we, we saw some increasing demand from, from certain Asian countries, for example. But of course, it will take a little longer until, until they are back and until they um, can start where they left off a couple of years ago. But no, from I mean, from the UK, from the US, and of course from all the neighboring countries, uh, European countries, we, we see we see great demand. Yeah. We will have a little bit uh, less uh, Swiss on the on the slopes uh, than than last year because the, the, the Swiss were skiing like crazy last year. They um, many of my my colleagues in the in the mountain resorts they skied more than ever. Of course, they also couldn't sit in the mountain restaurant, you know, in the afternoon and uh, you know open another bottle of wine, etc. That was not possible, unfortunately, uh, last winter. So people skied more than ever. But of course, now with the borders opening, some some Swiss, not all the Swiss ski, so some Swiss will end up on a beach somewhere uh, and not be on the slopes this winter. But there's definitely, um, as I said earlier, um, it, it's going very well with the bookings, um, but there is still space available. Good. Um, just, I think, one more question before I think we've, we've finished the panel discussion. Um, I think, you know, with... I think with the pandemic, people think everything stopped. And but actually, uh, can you um, give us some indication that actually ski resorts are continually investing in improving the client experience? You know, new lifts or new projects. Um, you know, I don't know, perhaps Will, you know, from your side, can you tell me something? You know, is that what you're seeing? Things didn't go on hold, 
investments carried on to make this this whole the mountain experience fantastic uh, exactly when i really felt like during the last couple of months i couldn't believe how much uh, building rebuilding refurnishing was done because people just had as well time to do it like planning and everything uh, uh as well in this key area you know we have, as you mentioned before uh the alberg is the biggest connected ski area and there is this famous run of fame which is 85 case but there was one point between uh in in Thurs, which was kind of uh like a needle how do you call needle we call it needle uh yeah. anyway so there were now two new lifts replaced the old lift and so this run of fame to really experience the whole alberg is uh much faster that it can be done faster but besides these uh projects by the lifts there were many uh, private uh, uh, hosts of uh, private uh, private hoteliers, entrepreneurs who uh, built like we have got this new hotel Ulla riding down and uh, and many refurnished and did new things. So I think uh, it's it's such a good uh, feeling as well and like putting into new uh, new bars and you are changing changing maybe concepts from an old bar to a really nice lounge type bar and so things have changed and i'm sure that when people come back they will say wow that was a good time for all of them uh really investing and doing new things and perhaps potentially with things actually closing it gave the opportunity to actually advance some projects and get on and do them so yes. you could say it was a, a positive time. um in in uh, in the 12 ballet on um uh, florine uh, similar with you is any new yes. lives or new projects that you can tell us about yes there's a lot going on in france in les trois valets specifically so i'm just talking about les trois valets there is new gondolas linking aurel and val -Torrance. there is a new cable car linking les menuires to la masse to give it a very easier access there is a new gondola between Bride les bains and, les and uh, Meribel, sorry, and a new chairlift between Meribel Motare and Les Menuires instead of the old, old gondola Platière 3. So that's just for the ski area. Um, and in Courchevel, we will be hosting, I don't know if you heard of it with Meribel, the finals of the Ski World Cup in March and the World Ski Championships in um, February 2023. And in Courchevel, we designed the slope for this event. So we will have a brand new black slope, uh, 3.2 kilometer long, uh, starting in La Luz, uh, going all the way down to Le Pras, so almost 1,000 meters of vertical drop. And outside of the event, all skiers will be allowed to ski on this uh, soon uh, iconic slope. That's very exciting and you know, wonderful to hear about that investment. And you know, people who haven't been for a couple of years will definitely notice that change. Uh, and Alex, I should give you the opportunity to say again for Switzerland, um, again, projects, investments, you know, in, in ski, ski resorts. There's, there's thousands of projects. The one I would like to mention is in the Bernice Oberland in the Jungfrau region. There's now a, a much easier access from Grindelwald into the ski, uh, ski resort where um, you save uh, up to three quarters of an hour because uh, it used to be the little mountain train that took you up to a Kleine Scheidegg. Now it's a gondola going straight there. You, you glide along the Eiger North face, which is an amazing experience, uh, even in the summer um, when I did it. So, so that's pretty much the biggest investment uh, that we've seen this winter that opened um, uh, a few months ago. And otherwise, with regards to hospitality, as hotels in Switzerland were only clo closed for a very short time or forced to close for a very short time last year, otherwise they were open. They were able to, um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, uh, have quite successful seasons in the mountains and there's a, a lot of investment going on this really people took advantage of some slower uh, months and uh, and closed down parts of the of the resorts of the hotels and it's uh, it's the time has been used for the best and the guests will be will be um very positive surprised to see how how much has been done over the last two years i mean that's fantastic to hear and i think you know that that, that word positive at the end uh, to me uh, rings through the all of the uh, conversations that you've been uh, we've had uh, on this webinar it sounds like you know everything is going to be open you can get there yes you might need to have a health pass but it's really not that complicated it's a piece of paper or it's on your phone um, and uh, and in the end when you get there, the experience is going to be better because there's a huge investment across the board um, which is just what we want to hear so uh, wonderful news uh, all round um, so thank you for that just going to Field a couple of questions that have come in uh, before we end the webinar. Um, first one, actually, I'm going to answer. Uh, there's certainly a question. There's a question about teenagers who, uh, certainly in the UK, not all teenagers or children of sort of 13, 14, 15 have only been offered one vaccine 
And the question is, therefore, how will they get a health pass if they have to have a double vaccine? But of course, the way around that is then if they don't have two vaccines, which some don't, because not every country is opened up to children of all ages, um, then they could get a negative, you know, they can get a PCR test or lateral flow test. So that is how uh, that you'll get a, a, around that. Uh, so that was one question. And actually, I'm going to answer the next one, you know, on booking terms and conditions and flexibilities. And if there are, if things do close or if the cancellations happen, from, from what I, from our side, from the accommodation side and all the general aspects, I think the flexibility is probably better than ever. Um, you know, we're aware of what hap has happened in the past and, you know, we've got to look after the people who are going to spend money and come to, uh, to, to book holidays. And it's anywhere in the world in, in many ways. And so they are much more flexible. You know, if you can't travel or there's a travel restrictions in place, then there's opportunities for refunds or moving bookings or something in between. There isn't one size fits all because it really does vary from accommodation provider to accommodation provider. Um, but I mean, we wouldn't be having so many people booking under the current terms and conditions if they didn't like what the terms and conditions said. I think the proof is in the fact that so many people have booked and that's just what Florine and Wilma Alex said. So therefore, I would say comfortably booking conditions are very fair, but it is really important. And it is a key question we, to highlight to clients what the conditions are, because there might be a reason they can't travel. So you must know where you stand. Uh, so ask, ask your travel agent um, what to do. Um, what other questions have we got there? Um, uh, it, one question here, is, has, is there going to be a limit on the number of ski passes being sold? Um, I haven't heard this. Um, uh, I'm getting nods from Alex and Florine. Vilma, anyone? No, kind of numbers of ski passes as normal. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, just a question, a bit one for Alex, I think. I'll put you on the spot. If people fly into Geneva and then very rudely decide not to go skiing in Switzerland, but want to then go to, to Courcheval, sorry, Alex, um, what, <laughs> what, do you know what they have to do to transit? They're only in there for you know an hour. Is there anything that they will be required to do? Do they have to fill in passenger locator forms just for that experience? Yes, they need to fill in the Swiss passenger locator form and just uh, saying that they are transiting only through Switzerland. And then uh, they have to fill in the, the French sworn declara declaration yeah. uh, for when they cross the border. But okay. yes, the Swiss PLF say, stating uh, transiting. So a bit of doubling up there, but it's uh, possible. Um, uh, uh, so no, thank you for that. Consider, consider staying a couple of nights at Geneva. It's, it's a lovely town. On the, <laughs> like, sure. I, I was waiting. Before you move on to Courchevel. And But I think the bigger message is, if, if you feel like skiing this winter, don't, don't worry about all these forms, etc. It's actually, I've traveled quite a bit the last two months. I know Wilma, you've traveled, Florian, you've traveled. It's actually much less worse than you think. And if, if you feel like, you know, I, maybe I want to go back on the slope, just go, just go. And it's, it's whether you go to France or Austria or Switzerland, go, on the, go to the slopes. It's, I think, uh, don't miss out on all the weight. I think that should be our message here. Yes. But that's a very good advice. Wilma, you'd like to say something I can see? Well, I just can say, I just agree exactly to what Alex said. Really get out. I mean, I've, I, I traveled as well quite a lot lately. And uh, I think it, it it's just, of course, at the first time you, you when you have to fill in the passenger locator form, you think, oh my God, what do I have to do? But it's done in two minutes. And, you know, things get so much easier and they just uh, become like kind of part of our life. So uh, when I was in London, I thought, oh my God, it's difficult. But at the end of the day, it it was not. I mean, once you're there, you feel... Uh, uh, everything is fine and the same thing vice versa so just come back get on the skis and you know skiing is an outdoor sport so you are outside on the mountains and it's just uh i think it's good for everybody it's it's good for the soul it's good for for, for everything makes you happy makes us happy it does indeed and i think um basically as uh, as you i think i think we're going to draw it to an end there um but i think those passing comments uh could not be truer and i fundamentally believe that and a massive thank you, therefore, to Alex, to Florine and to Wilma for, for your contributions today. Um, and thank you, um, uh, the people who have joined. I hope that was useful. Um, it's a big topic in a small amount of time, but I, it gives you the, the idea that it's basically very positive. It's very exciting. Skiing is definitely back. It is time to return to the mountains and just enjoy being in the mountains. 
uh, whatever you might be doing there. So um, we will have a webinar again probably in a few weeks' time or before the season happens. But uh, until then, uh, goodbye and thank you, everyone. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.